right? Yeah. Uh, it seems like it, it. It seems like there is no week four through twelve. You know, it's like the first couple weeks, then it's the last couple weeks. You know, and 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 everything in between goes by in in a blink. Um. You the the last assignment has been posted. It's relating to creating tables, and tables are the the main topic today. So um, there's probably three or four, or, or there's probably I, I've listed an angel. Well, let's just put it this way: I've listed an angel. The list of chapters, and to the degree that we're going to cover them, some of them we're not going to cover much. But by all means, read them and bring any questions you have for class, <clears throat> especially if you are planning on using any of them, any of that kind of stuff on your project. For example, there's one on uh, on video and in in multimedia and all that. So if you're thinking of doing any of that on your project, by all means, bring that. Uh, bring your questions to class and review it, and, and we'll help sort it out. Your project is a big deal, getting that completed, um, and so therefore that that's a priority. Uh, feel free to get feedback from people through Angel or in lab or, or however you can. Um, this week we will probably focus on tables both days. I don't know if we'll fill both days with tables, but we'll, we'll probably come pretty close to it anyhow. Um, the other two topics that I'm going to lecture about, one is JavaScript, and just to sort of give you a taste of the kinds of things that JavaScript provides to a page. We really don't have time to get into it in any great detail, but I think you should just be at least aware of the capabilities and what you can do with it that you can't do uh, with regular old uh, HTML. The other thing that we'll talk about is deploying a website. In other words, okay, we finished it. You have a great website uh, on your machine, but you want the rest of the world to see it. What are the things that you need to do to get that going? So we'll talk about those two things next week. Um, there will likely be some time to uh, work on your project, so be sure you bring your project materials to class. Uh, and, and again, be sure to share with others in the class what you're doing on your semester project. Uh, I know a lot of you have worked hard on it, and you know you should show it off. And, um, and, and other folks in the class should take this opportunity to learn from, from um, other, you know, the other people in the class and see what they've done and, and get some ideas maybe and, and maybe learn some things. So that's sort of how it will go for the rest of the semester. All right. Questions about any of that? All right. Good. Um, it's funny. When I... Um, when I when I worked a, a more typical nine to five job, you know, as a software developer, you know, I'd have two day weekends, and and every Sunday it was like if I could just have one more day, it would be the weekend. It would be great, you know. I'm feeling feeling okay. The two days off is nice, but just one more day. And then when I started teaching here, I I work longer days Monday through Thursday. I, I put in a lot of time on those days, and of course I do stuff outside of class as well. But I do have Fridays off, so that's a good thing. Uh, and, and still, it didn't take too long for me on Sunday evenings to say, you know, I've had three days off, but if I only had one more day. And this being a holiday weekend, you know, a four-day weekend for me, because I had Thursday and Friday off, somehow I'm still sitting there saying, you know, four days is nice, but if I just had one more day. So I don't know what that tells you. Uh, it certainly has nothing to do with web development. So. Per the syllabus, you were entitled to shout who cares, but you know, uh, no, one, no one took me up on that. At any rate, today we're going to talk about tables. And if we were taught, if this class were being taught, say, 10 years ago, let's say, I probably would have covered tables a lot earlier. Because back in the, uh, in, you know, years ago, not, not a lot of years ago, but, but in the earlier days of the internet, CSS was not supported very well. And it was in the process of being developed, or it might have even been prior to it being developed in some cases. But people still wanted to get their layouts on their pages right. So people used tables. And that's a misuse of tables. That's essentially lying to your browser. Because when I talk about a table, I'm meant to represent a table of data. 
And some folks that have been doing web development for a while may have used tables to lay out their pages. It sort of allows you to divide your page up into a grid and put stuff in each grid. All right? But that's not what tables are meant for, and that's not what they should be used for. Um, if you've ever done anything like that, stop it. You know, don't do it anymore. If you if you have never done uh, uh, anything like that, that's fine. Don't don't bother looking it up. All right, because uh, it's not worth learning. All right, but there is a legitimate use for tables, and a legitimate use for tables is when you want to show a table of data. Well, what do we mean by a table of data? We mean something like you would see you would see in Excel, where there's rows and columns of data. All right. Let's look at, for example, the table that you need to create for your assignment. I was real excited to see that they actually that, that, that the table I want you to create is actually an image on the website. Therefore, you can't just copy and paste it. So I was happy about that. But here's the table that I want you to create. No, this is an old browser. I wanted to say yes. All right. Here's the table I want you to create. This is a table that says the mobile share of traffic of web traffic. And it shows the trends and uh, between 2010 and 2012 and the increase. So you could easily imagine this in a uh, Excel spreadsheet, right? You have your, your column headers, you got your row headers, and then you have rows and columns of data, all right? So in other words, if you, you know, if you were to look at this number here, 7.55, what does that represent? Well, that represents 2012 in Oceana. All right. Um, Asia, 17% of traffic in 2012 web traffic was mobile. All right. North America, 7%. Yeah, look, again, look at the percentage increases. Yep. It is interesting because I've read uh, some cases about where they talk about leapfrogging technology. In other words, in some of the less developed countries, you know, they're not entrenched in the desktop computer era. Therefore, they skip right over that and in, into the mobile area, era. So I think that's that could count for some of the um, some of the the, the increase in, in the high numbers in Africa and Asia and so on. Is that uh, in those areas where there's less developed countries, they don't necessarily uh, have tons of desktops. So, you know, you get a mobile device, you know, and, and it's cheaper and, you know, allows you to do the things that you want to do for the most part. But anyhow, you're going to create a table for this. You're going to create uh, a table with rows and columns. All right. Now, let's talk about the tags that you need to create a table. First of all, let's talk about what you might try, how you might try to create a table, and why it won't work. You might try doing this. And this is doomed to fail. <laughs> all right? But you might wonder, why do I need any special tags for that? Can I just do something like this? Let's say I was doing temperatures. Um, and we can see already how this is going, right? Average temperature in Cleveland. And in January, I don't know, we'll say 10 degrees. February, yeah, right, 
15, 25, and then in St. Louis. And I'm making these numbers up, so. No. I, it's just the first city that popped into my head. <laughs> All right. So there we go. We have a table of data, right? There's rows and columns. Why won't this work? Yeah, because the browser doesn't care about the white spaces. This is just going to be one giant line going across. Right, right. One space between everything. Now, even if you try to cheat and put break tags after these, you're not going to be much better off. Even if you get wise and realize there's something called a non-breaking space, all right, like this, non-breaking space, and I pad out that, all right, almost, maybe a couple more. Still not quite. The amount of time that you'd spent playing around with that would be crazy and, and it would be very fragile. That is, anytime anything that you went to, to do to change it would, would really mess it up. All right, so there's a set of tags that are meant to be used to, to represent a, uh, a table of data, that is, rows and columns of data. All right, and so let's use those to show how to do a table the proper way. First of all, starts with a table tag. And correspondingly, it ends with a table tag. Now again, typically there's going to be one table tag for a collection of rows. It's not like you have a table tag for uh, one separate table tag for each row. You have one table tag that encompasses a collection of related rows. So, for example, in that previous example, that was one table. There's one table that shows the, the average temperature for three selected cities. So, there'll be one table tag for that. All right? A table is considered to be a collection of rows. So, row, 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 row. All right? So, a table is a collection of rows. And rows are a collection of table cells. All right? Now, there can be two kind of cells with tables. There can be header cells and data cells. Typically, each row in a table is going to contain the same number of cells. That way, it will be a nice grid that will line up correctly. So, in this case, I can have, let's say, four cells in each row, one of which is going to contain, you know, the headers, and one is going to contain the city, and, uh, or one's going to contain the headers, and then the, the following three will contain the city and the temperatures. All right. Now, one thing to remember, we're going to start out doing uh, tables that aren't going to look particularly good. All right. They'll be lined up in everything. All right. However, they're not going to be formatted very well. Now, 
With tables, like with many other HTML elements, there are attributes in the table tags that you can use to control the appearance. But we're not going to be using those. Why? Because we're going to control everything about the appearance using CSS. All right. So um, if you if you're aware of any of the things that you can do on a table to to make it look a certain way, don't use it. We're going to do it all through CSS. So in this case. We have a table. I have a table row, which is a TR tag. Tables, it's very important to get the nesting of them right. Therefore, if you notice, I'm indenting properly. And as soon as I put in a start tag, I'm putting in the end tag. So I'm going to do the first row of my table. And that consists of headers, which says city. January, February, and March. Then I'm going to do one city to start, and we'll look at it. So let's take a look at this and what we have. We have one table. Table tag goes around everything. Table consists of two rows. Here's your first row, which is a header, and the second row, which is data. In the first row, which is a header row, we have TH tags, which indicates that those are header cells. And in the second row, we have TD tags, which indicates those are data cells. So we'll go in and we'll do the last three like we had before. Yeah, notice each of them have the same number of cells. The only difference between them is that in one case, the cells are headers, so they're THs. In the other three cases, they're data cells. That ought to be a conceptual thing. In other words, don't look at and see how a TH is displayed and say, I want my table to look like that, so I'll make everything THs. No. It's a, he it's a TH if it's a header. If logically that's a header, that's not data. All right, so let's go save this and let's look at it in the browser. And you'll see we have a table of data. All right, let me make it bigger. Nothing particularly elegant about it, but things do line up. And I didn't have to go through and try to pad things out with spaces or non-breaking spaces or anything like that. Each TR designates a row. The THs and TDs designate either table header data or table data data. Notice the difference between a TH and a TD. The TH by default is bold. So notice that first row is bold. Notice also that, that the data in the THs is centered. Now, you really can't get that from January, February, and March. It might not be apparent that it's centered, but you can tell by looking at city. 
How wide is each table cell? As wide as it needs to be. All right. So in this case, is, is how wide does it need to be? It needs to be as wide as the biggest field in it, the biggest piece of data. So for example, if you look, the February column is actually a little wider than the March column. Why? Well, because February is a longer word than March. All right. Now, January, February, March are centered, but since they take up all the space in it, you know, it's not obvious to see that it's centered. All right. Remember, whenever you're styling something, that the, 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 the appearance of it ultimately is determined by two factors. One is the style code that you put into it, and number two is the default behavior of the browser. So in this case, I didn't really put any style code in it, so everything you see is based on the default behavior of the browser. So the default behavior says THs are bold and centered, cells are as big as they need to be. All right. Questions about this? Yes. Yeah, if you want to put lines, if you want to put a border, or lines, and all that, we can do that through CSS. All right. And what do I want to say? Um, pretty much the stuff that you've learned about CSS, you can apply to tables. <clears throat> but we're going to go through and, uh, and, and apply some things just to maybe give you some ideas of some of the things you can do with tables. Question. All right, let's start by trying to make this table look a little nicer than it is. So we're going to style this a bit. All right. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to give the table a width. And as you might imagine, I can give the table a width one of two ways. I can either give it a width in terms of an absolute size, in terms of a certain number of pixels, or I can give it a relative size in terms of a percentage of the available space. We'll start out, we'll do it 600 pixels. All right. Now it might be apparent that they're centered. Right, because January is over here and the amount is over there. Now, we gave a size for the table, but we didn't give the size for each column. So how did it determine the size of each column? Um, it more or less divided evenly, evenly, but I would say it divided it proportionately, because I'll bet you if we look, the March column is a little smaller than the February, January, and City column because the March column has less characters in it, so it takes up less space. Again, the bottom line is that if you don't specify something, the browser figures it out based on its rules. All right. Again, this being an absolute size, I can resize this table all I want and is not going to budge at all because I've specified it. A better thing to do in a lot of cases is to give a percentage. Not 800 percent, 80 percent. Let's go and let's unzoom it. There we go. If I zoom, that messes it up. 
So this takes up 80% of the page. So notice that as I make it smaller, the browser automatically adjusts the individual columns. Now notice how it won't make it smaller beyond a certain point. So even though I've defined it as 80%, if I make it smaller still, even though it fills up the screen, it doesn't make the data any smaller. Why is that? Well, it's not going to split any words. So, for example, it's not going to split February. All right, February is a word. It's not going to go and put FEB on one line and then the rest on the second line. If I have two words, it will do that. So, if I, if the header said January temperature, February temperature, March temperature, it'll show that when it gets smaller, it actually flips it into two lines for the header. Now this is one thing I sort of mean when I talk about, and I think I've said this before, you don't always need to be concerned about micromanaging your styles. You know, the browser is pretty smart. And in, in many cases, simply letting the browser do, simply styling the things that are most important to you and letting the browser do its default behavior will oftentimes be, be enough. All right. Now, if you notice, again, I've not specified a width for the columns, yet the city column is the narrowest. All right. Again, why is that? Well, let's look at the biggest thing in each of the columns. The biggest thing in each of the monthly columns is the header, January temperature, February temperature, March temperature. And that's a lot longer than the biggest thing in the city column, which is Cleveland. So it sort of sizes those proportionately. Now, what if I wanted the columns to be an equal width? What could I do? I could either set a width on my TDs or on my THs. All right. Let's go in and let's set a width on the THs. No, we'll, we'll talk about that in a second. You don't have to do both. Because they're all columns, right, and, it, and it'll line it up. Yep. So let's say I make a TIH with 25%. All right. That makes the columns even sized. Now, notice I just did it to the THs. So I've taken control of the THs. I haven't touched the TDs, but I really don't need to. Why? Because if I style the THs, given the fact that this is a column of data, it's going to style everything down. So if I style something, that sort of sets it for the whole column. I don't have to style it for each thing individually. And notice also that the browser won't let something bad happen. That is, if it can, it will make everything 25%. But at a certain point, it's not going to cut those down. So actually, at, a, at the smallest size, the three temperature columns still end up taking a little more space up than the city column, even though I've specified 25% um, for all of them. So it's not going to like chop off a word, or it's not going if, to, if it's one long unbroken word, it's not going to divide the word and put it, you know, put it down on the next line. It will do that if there's a space between the words. Okay, if we have a TD element that exceeds the 25%, but 
but as big as. Let's go and do that. Yeah. Okay. Let's go and Google. The longest place name in the world. Okay. So the question was, is what happens if there's a TD that's bigger than 25% and unbroken? Yeah. And I don't know what the temperature is there, but I'm guessing it's warm. Plus the fact that if this is in the southern hemisphere, this would be at summer, right? January, yeah. This is a lot to think about on a Monday morning. All right. So what's going to happen? Yeah, one more day, yeah. I'll be better equipped to address this on, on a Tuesday. It did because there's dashes. Yeah. Let's go and let's take out the dashes. Again, it doesn't cut it off. It, it just goes and, you know, it, it, it looks at your, it, it, how do I want to say it? It looks at your style rules, but since the data doesn't allow those style rules to take place, it does what it needs to do to display the data. Not really. It's not really a minimum width. It, it becomes more of a suggestion. It's like, unless you got some problems with this because of the data, make everything 25%. All right. Now, let's go back to this situation. Again, by default, the THs are center aligned and bold. We can certainly change that, though, if we want to. So we could make these to be left aligned, and we can make maybe a different font size. It's still bold, though. Why is it still bold? Because, yeah, it's, it's the default of the browser. Remember, it's a combination of what you have specified and what the browser wants to do by default. So the browser, by default, wants to make these things centered and bold. I've overridden the browser's default here by saying I want the text align to be left. But I did not override the centering of, of, I'm sorry, not the centering, the uh, boldness of it, so therefore it appears bold. What could I do to make the top line, the line of headers, a different background color? Okay, set the background how? Uh, 
I could put the th tags. I could say background. Gray. That's kind of dark. Let's make it a lighter gray. So. There's a little space between those cells. That's kind of a quirk of tables. The way that you can get rid of that is by saying this. In the table you can say border collapse, collapse, I think. Yeah, and there you go. What do you mean? Mm -hmm. It's a question of whether it can fit it in the constraints uh, of what I've said. So let's look at, let, the, the question is, is why are January temperature and March temperature all on one line but February temperature not? The, the short answer is because February it takes up more space than either January or March, okay? Let's look at the style rules that are relevant here. I've said I want the table to be 80% of the page. So, okay, the table's 80% of the page. I want each column to be 25%, which it will do if it can, right? Remember, it won't do it if it's going to cut off data. Like when we had that really long name in there, it didn't make them 25% because that would have involved somehow cutting off the data. But so if it can do it without cutting off the data, it will. Now, putting the, the, the data on two lines is okay for the browser. That's not cutting off the data. That's just putting it on two lines. So it can make everything 25% if it simply takes February and drops the word temperature down to the next line. All right. As we make this smaller, you'll notice that, yeah, January must be right on the edge between when I collapsed it I gave a little more space so it was able to fit January and then at a certain point even March will go down yeah then at a certain point it can't go down any further and and we're stuck with that size all right questions now I don't like the way that when I make it really small the the tables um, The, t the table headers smash up against each other, so I can put a padding here. So there's at least a little bit of space between them. What about borders? What if I wanted to put an underline underneath the headings? How could I do that? An underline underneath the headings. So you could just put a bottom border, right? Remember that with borders, we can specify either a general style for all the borders. Remember for when we're setting a border, there's actually four sides to a border. Top, right, bottom, left. If I do something like this, one pixel black solid, that will be the border all four ways around. I can also specify the border by saying border top, border bottom, border left, border right. So. I could go in here and say 
border bottom Two pixel black solid and and get an underline underneath that. No, it doesn't override the border collapse. Let's remove the border collapse and see what happens. You get the little white space between, right. So if I remove the border collapse and do this, there would be a tiny little gap between them. All right. So what the border collapse does is it pushes all those things together. Now, if I wanted a different look for the cities in here and their temperature data, I could probably supply a different rule for a TD. Now, one thing that happens, and you, you definitely would see this in the old days with computer printouts. Computer printouts that are on long sheets of paper that are just rows and columns of numbers. Occasionally, the eye has a tendency to drift up or down. All right? And therefore, what they would do is they would print the, the, the printout, the report, on a, on a sheet of paper that was called green bar paper that would have alternating green bars. And that just sort of helps align, uh, the eye align and, and not lose track of, of what's related. All right. What could we do on this page? And I'm, well, I'm going to go, and just for, just for laughs, I'm going to be lazy and I'm just going to copy and paste this over and over again. I'm not going to bother changing the cities. But you can imagine that there are other cities in here. If I was looking at this city, there'd be the chance if I was looking for what's the temperature in this city in March, uh, I should be at 30, but if my eyes go on a Cross, I could get confused and think it's 50 or 40 if it goes up or down a row. What could I do to keep that from happening here? Okay. Somehow alternate the background color, right? How would I do that? Use a class, right? Now, why use a class instead of an ID? Well, because there's going to be more than one thing on this page that I want to apply the style to. Use an ID when you want to apply a style to one thing. Use a class when you want to apply it to multiple things. So, what I could do here is I could create a class of alternate row and I could give a background color. And then I could go on alternating rows and apply that class.
do I? Uh, we'll see. I do. Now we have it coded so that your eye shouldn't go up or down as you're, as you're looking across the page. This is especially important if you were to have, for example, a, a uh, table that has a lot of columns in it and a lot of rows, all right, where, where the data is pretty densely packed. And as you go across, your eye has more of a tendency to go up or down. All right. There's a few other things that we can do to style these tables. And then there's a number of considerations that we make for accessibility. The first consideration for accessibility is keep your table simple. All right. For example, let's say I were to make a table that wanted to show the average temperature and rainfall. I could try to do that by making just one table and have all my rows of data for the temperature on the top, and then have a different row of headers to say rainfall, you know, inches of rainfall or in inches of precipitation. You don't want to combine two things in one table. If you have two, if you're showing two kinds of data, then have two different tables, all right? There's an example uh, in one of the online resources that shows like, for example, the, the uh, schedule for a school and it shows the fall schedule and spring schedule. And it has them combined. It has some rows that are fall, then it has another he set of headers, then it has rows for the spring. You're better off breaking that into two tables. So two simple tables are better than one complicated table. That will make your life easier in terms of maintaining it, and it also has ex uh, accessibility considerations. Well, what we'll do next time is look at some of the other features of tables and some of the other features of styling them uh, along with the accessibility concerns. All right? Questions? All right. See you in lab.